What is Toltecayo 2? We will try to discover it in this video. In the past, there exists a word, Toltecayo 2. This concept is known by few and understood by even fewer. Generally, Toltecayo 2 is discussed only among circles of archaeology, history and anthropology. It is also talked about among New Age groups, dancers and some independent scholars. But, let's be clear, there is the Toltecayo and the Toltecayo tool. What do I mean by this? Today, we have a different collective and individual vision of these topics. These trends have grown for decades, before 2012 and continue to the present day, with new interpretations emerging about what existed in the past. There are countless examples of this. Modern celebrations to invade good babes on the spring equinox and pyramid bases. A leash pre-Hispanic martial art. Suppose pre dances, pre-Hispanic yoga, and much more. Even Toltecayo tool doesn't escape, as there are no self-proclaimed Toltec churches, or churches of Toltecayo tool. And of course, the famous book The Four Agreements by Manuel Ruiz is often cited. However, all of this so-called Toltecayo tool is a personal interpretation of its creators. For example, the four agreements by Miguel Ruiz are not based on a specific historical Toltec sources, but rather it is a personal interpretation where principles and teachings considered valuable for contemporary life were adapted by the author. Obviously, these agreements would not be found exactly as stated in any historical source. But if we go by that logic, we could easily create the four agreements for the Purépechas, Wichols, and so on. Thus, the four agreements is not a historical or academic book that provides precise references to verify historical sources. It represents a new Toltecayo tool created for our modernity. There's nothing wrong with that, but it should be clarified for the broader audience. Now, let's move on to the other Toltecayo tool. When we mention the word, we face our first and perhaps greatest problem. Referring to the sources that talk about Toltecayo tool. For better or worse, these sources consist of documents in the Spanish language whether by conquerors, evangelizing friars, or converted indigenous people. Therefore, what we have about Toltecayotut is owed to a Euro-indigenous vision, where we find countless foreign concepts like devil, heaven, god, etc. Now, whether we know about Toltecayo tool or not, almost everyone has heard of the Toltecs, Tula and Quetzalcoatl. Most people understand that there was once someone called Quetzalcoatl, a mythical being who imparted most knowledge and ruled the city called Tula, the city from which Toltecayo tool emerged. But it's not that simple. We are dealing with distortion that may span thousands of years. Just a few decades ago, it was thought that the mythical Tula of Quetzalcoatl and therefore the birthplace of Toltecayotl was in Tula, Xicocotitlan, or in classic Nahuatl, Toland, Xicocotitlan, which translates to place of reed, near the place of Kikotes. However, today it is believed that if there was a great capital that influenced many cultures, it was Teotihuacan having chronological issues in this regard. 
as Tula in Hidalgo is estimated to have flourished between the 18th and 12th centuries AD, while Teotihuacan, whose real name is unknown, disappeared around 600 to 650 AD. There is a gap of more than 200 years between these civilizations. Moreover, if we consider that the Teotihuacanos would have influenced the Toltecs, it adds another layer of complexity. Despite this, sources often focus on the mythical Tula in Hidalgo, as the cradle of Toltecayatu. Now, if we specifically talk about the Nahuatl war Toltecayotu, it raises further doubts. It could imply that the Toltecs spoke Nahuatl, and from there, words like Quetzalcoatl, Tolan, and Toltecayot originated. However, based on these Nahuatl words, the question arises again. Who were the original Toltecs? Those from Tula in present-day Hidalgo, or from Teotihuacan in the state of Mexico? Another factor adding more uncertainty in the Nahuatl war Tolan which precisely defines Tula in Hidalgo as Tolan Xicocotitlan. Tula is the Castilian the formation of Tolan. Tolan obviously had an influence on the formation of the word Toltecayotul. In various indigenous relations we find the term Tolan, which literally means in the place of reeds. However, this was also defined large human settlements and cities. In Aguatul they spoke of Tolan Teotihuacan, Tolan Chololan, Tolan Jicocotitlan, Tolan Culhuacan, etc. Therefore, Tolan and Sidi would be synonymous, and this term would not exclusively define of group where Quetzalcoatl supposedly lived. We could colloquially speak of Toltecs from Teotihuacan, Toltecs from Azcapotzalco, Toltecs from Tenochtitlan, Toltecs from Texcoco, etc. Adding to these controversies is the historical unawareness of Toltecayotl, not to mention our current era, or the New Age movement, both from sources influenced by Europeans. The name Tolan Teotihuacan, for instance, was coined by the Mexicas, who named the remains of the city, and based on the remnants they found, they created myths such as the Legend of the Sons and many others. Why has mentioned the word Toltecayotl belongs to Nahuatl, and if the true Toltec culture was Teotihuacan, there is doubt as to whether they spoke Nahuatl. There is no certainty that Nahuatl was the official language of the Teotihuacanos, as archaeology has discovered many settlements of diverse groups that did not speak Nahuatl. Examples include Maya, Zapotec, and other groups inhabiting the city who did not speak Nahuatl. The great unknown about the original Toltecs is acknowledged by the Mexicas and other groups, as Miguel Leon Portilla highlighted in his book Toltecayotl. He cites informants of Bernardino de Sagún, who speak of the ignorance surrounding many supposed Toltecs. At a certain time that no one can now count, about which no one can now remember well, those who came here to sow for the grandparents, the grandmother, those who were there were the wise ones, the so-called possessors of the books of paintings, but they did not stay long. The wise ones then left. Once again, they entered their boats and took away the black and red ink, the codices and paintings. They took away all the arts, the Toltecayot, the music of the flutes. So, to our modern ignorance of Toltecayotl, the ignorance of the original groups of that time is added. There is also the Toltec idealization, which is compared to the idealization that occurred with the Maya. Just 50 or 7 years ago, at the beginning of Mayan research in the jungle, there was a belief that the ancient Maya were entirely wise and peaceful groups. However, when deciphering their language, it revealed Mayan groups in contents, warfare, and disputes. 
Similarly, Mexicas and many others who did not get to know the Toltecs, whether from Tula or Teotihuacan, idealized them equally. The Toltecs, they tell us, always went far ahead, dealing with the Toltecs, the people of Quetzalcoatl. The inhabitants of Tolan Xicocotitlan was something that pleased many Nahuatl people in later times. Indeed, the Toltecs were wise, all their words were good, upright, well planned, and marvelous. The Toltecs were very wealthy, happy, they never knew poverty or sadness. The Toltecs were experienced, they used to engage in dialogue with their own hearts. But the evidence demystifies this perfect Toltec past. Teotihuacan and Tula were abandoned, and in both places, remnants of destruction and burned buildings were found, while the reasons for their decline and disintegration are unknown. Some hypotheses point to overpopulation, lack of food, drugs, migration of inhabitants to other cities, and warlike incursions of nomadic groups from the north. And well, part of their most mythical downfall refers to the events in which Tezcatlipoca expelled Quetzalcoatl from Toland. All that has been mentioned so far shows the complicity of understanding the origin and definition of what Toltecayotl is. Some even claim that the Toltecs were not a people, but a degree of wisdom within Toltecayotl. So, let's finally try to define what it was and what it encompassed. In the first Nahuatl dictionary written in the middle 16th century by Father Molina, Toltecayatul is translated as the art of living. On the other hand, Miguel Leon Portilla pointed out that Toltecayatul is a concept used by the Nahuas to understand the cultural legacy from the Toltecs. This encompasses various topics such as prehispanic historiography, mythical thinking, the origin of the world, ideas of number, time and space, their ideals in education, literature and social organization. Thus, we have a mixture of historical, scientific and mythical data that elevate Toltec culture to a kind of cult. This idealized Toltec and its social environment created an aura of prestige, with which all Nahuatl speak groups at least wanted to be affiliated. Later, they claimed to be direct heirs of Toltecayotl. Meanwhile, the original Toltecatl became synonymous with an artist, a sage, considering that Toltecayotl as a whole was seen as an entire political, social, economic and spiritual belief system that aimed to reveal the true nature of human beings and seek a fulfilling life. It is important to note its significance. While we can focus on Toltecayotl among groups in the central region of present-day Mexico and those who spoke Nahuatl, we cannot dismiss its logical influence on other not Nahuatl cultures. In broad terms, Toltecayotl encompassed what they consider their heritage a seed of inspiration and determinant of future achievements. Therefore, Toltecayotl as the supposed legacy of Quetzalcoatl and the Toltecs included the Black and Red Inn. This Inn was manifested in codices, which, in turn, were the wisdom in Christ of Amate paper. The existence of codices served as evidence to the existence of greeting and a calendar. It also attested to the existence of art taught in schools, where music was also taught. Toltecayotl embraced principles that are not referred to as moral, emphasizing goodness and rectitude in human relations, the art of good eating, and the Asian war. Some of these concepts survive in what is known the compilation of Huehuetlatoli. Toltecayotl also permitted laws of conduct and penalties as punishment, 
similar to those attributed to Nezahualcóyotl. The existence of institutions and authorities in a community was crucial for supporting the structuring of society. All these elements and other realities were included in the meaning of Toltecayetl. It was adopted by many groups, becoming a social structure that influenced aspects of many societies at the time. It is evident that a distinct culture existed, contrary to the Hispanic ideas that Europeans brought civilization to supposedly ignorant and seeming beings lacking any culture. It is evident that Toltecayotl existed and contradicts these notions. Of course, the challenge, and perhaps near impossibility, lie in determining to what extent unchanged aspects of Toltecayotl were recorded in historical sources. However, understanding, as they simply did back then, that one of the purposes of Toltecayotl was to allow the emergency of the Toltec the artist, the creator in each of us is crucial. Though ancient teachings, the goal was to refine our hearts like a piece of jade, revealing our true selves. Our true faces without the need to hide behind any masks. Thus, Toltecayotl came to signify culture, an intricate social framework seeking to improve individuals and bring order to society. Hence, there is the historical Toltec, about whom much remains unknown. This figure was by no means idolized, but undoubtedly existed, inspired and contributed to the creation of the social framework. If we believe in the concept of Toltecayotl, any person with work, effort, Dedication and education can become a Tolte. They can apply Toltecayotl to their daily lives, avoiding the principles of this cultural system.